As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and I'm really ready to dive in with you into Ephesians chapter 6, which is where we ended yesterday. We're looking at the subject of spiritual weapons to defeat the enemy. God has given you everything you need to keep the devil under your feet. But once a year, I always deal with this subject because... In Ephesians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul said it is imperative that we understand what kind of weapons God has provided for every believer, and that also means for you. What kind of weapons has God given to you? And when we study Ephesians chapter 6, we find that Paul describes seven pieces of Roman weaponry that is essential for every believer and was essential for every Greek and Roman soldier. And now he uses all of these as examples of the weaponry which God has given to us. And just for fun, I brought along today on the set examples of real, authentic weaponry from the ancient world along with replicas. For example, we have a replica of a Roman shield. We're going to be getting into that a little later this week. We have a replica of a Roman spear, of a loin belt, of the shoes which were worn by the Roman soldiers. We have a replica of a breastplate. And then we have some real items. For example, here are greaves. These were the pieces of weaponry which were worn around the lower legs of the Roman soldier. When we get into this, you're simply going to be amazed to find out how this was a weaponry for Roman soldiers and how God has given us peace to protect us like these greaves. We're going to see that God has given us a sword. This is a real authentic sword from the ancient world. It's a little rusted because they haven't survived too well. We also see here on the set, a battle axe. This, of course, was on a a piece of wood, but this was used by the enemy to take your head off if you weren't wearing a helmet. Helmets were essential to protect your head, and that's why behind us we have authentic helmets from the ancient world. For example, on the far side, we have a real Greek helmet. It's about 2,600 years old. Next to it, we have a helmet that kind of looks like a cap, but it's really a helmet which was worn by the soldiers of Alexander the Great. It's authentic. Next to that, we have a hoplite hat, very classical hoplite helmet. It's amazing. Next to that, we have this piece, which is typical of the Roman infantry in southern Italy. And then finally, we have a helmet which was worn by the Scythians. Soldiers in the ancient world knew they needed to have weaponry to go into battle. And likewise, God has given us spiritual weaponry. He's given us a shield of faith, a breastplate of righteousness, a helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit. He's given us the lance of intercession, the loin belt of the Word of God. All of these are weapons which God has given to us. And I want you to order my entire series, which is called Dress to Kill, A Biblical Approach to Spiritual Warfare and Armor, where we go into all of this in great detail. This is 10 parts this week. I'm just teaching five times, but this is a 10-part series. It is very, very thorough. You will devour it, and you need to understand what God has provided for you. And this series comes with a study guide, and we're offering you my book by the same title called Dress to Kill. And God has amazingly blessed this book. He has used it all over the world. It's become a Christian classic, and it has photos. It has illustrations so that you can actually see everything that's being described in the book. It will really help you to understand what kind of weapons God has provided for you. But you can order all these things by going online or by giving us a call. And please be sure to let us know how to pray for you when you reach out to us. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Reach for your Bible and open your Bible to Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to begin reading again today in verse 10, where the Apostle Paul says, Finally, my brethren, we've seen that word finally in Greek means now to the last and most important matter at hand. He has saved the most important thing to the end of the text, So if they don't remember anything else, they're going to remember this. And then he begins to talk to them about spiritual warfare and spiritual weaponry. That's how important this subject is. 
He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And in yesterday's program, we entirely dealt with the issue of spiritual power. If you take all these pieces of weaponry and add what they weighed, they were quite heavy. It could be all the way up to 80 pounds. Well, just imagine if somebody suddenly dropped 80 pounds of weaponry on you and then told you to run around the block, it might be a little hard unless you were really physically fit. And in the same way, before Paul ever gets into the subject of all the weaponry, he begins with the subject of power because he knows you have to have power for the fight. You have to have power to operate in this kind of weaponry. But then Paul adds, and he says, if you have all of this weaponry and if you have the power of God, you're able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand against, in Greek, the word stand is the word stani. It means to stand. It pictures a Roman soldier with his head held high, his shoulders are thrown back. He knows who he is. He's courageous. He's bold. He is confident. The power of God gives you confidence. You're confident because you know you have spiritual weapons. And not only that, it says stand against. That word against means directly against, which means if you have the power of God and the weapons that God provides, you're not running from the enemy, but you are in a position to push him out of your life. And if he's crossed the line in your life, into your marriage, into your finances, if he's crossed the line into your health, into your kids, you have everything you need to push him back across the line. He's a violator. He does not belong where he is currently trying to be. You can push him back and you've been given everything you need to deal with the wiles of the devil. Now, the devil can attack your health. The devil can attack your marriage. The devil can attack your finances. The devil can attack your self-worth. The devil can attack us in so many ways. But I have learned over the years that there are five words that really describe the way the devil attacks. And if you understand how he works, then you can undo his attack. And in today's program, we're going to deal with how the devil operates. But notice in this verse, Paul says that when you have the power of God, and when you have the weapons that God provides, you can stand against, against, push it back out, the wiles of the devil. Let's begin with those two words, wiles, and the word devil. Let's begin with the word wiles. The word wiles in Greek is the word methodios. It's a compound of two words, the word meta, which means with, and the word hodas, which is the Greek word for a road or an avenue. When you compound the two words together, it forms the word methodias. It's where we get the word for method. But in Greek, it describes one who operates on a particular road, on a particular lane, or on a particular avenue. Well, roads take you somewhere. And the first thing Paul tells us is the devil has a sense of direction. He knows how to attack. He knows where to attack. He is headed to one particular place in order to attack us. And when he gets to that place, he begins to operate like a devil. This is the second word you need to understand to know how the devil operates. First of all, he comes with intention. He comes with direction. He knows exactly where he's headed. He knows exactly where to attack. And I'm going to describe that place in just a moment. And when he gets there, he begins to operate like number two, a devil. The word devil is the Greek word diabolos. Ah, it's a compound of two words, the word dia, which carries the idea of penetration, and the word balos, which means to throw something or hurl something like a ball or a rock. And when you compound the two words together, the name devil, the Greek word diabolos, is not just a name, it is a job description. It describes exactly how the devil operates. He operates diabolos. He begins to strike and strike and strike, hurl something against you again and again and again and again and continues until finally dia, he penetrates. And here's what we find. The devil knows that the mind is the control center of your life. Now you might say, well, wait, 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 wait. I'm born again. My spirit is the control center. That's true. But whoever controls your mind is going to dominate your life. 
If God's word dominates your mind, God's word will dominate your life. If the devil floods your mind with lies, those lies will dominate your life. And the devil understands that. He understands that whoever controls your brain and your thinking controls you. It can work you like a puppet. That is why the devil's after your brain. That is why education is after your brain. That's why Hollywood is after your brain. They want your mind because whoever controls your mind will control what you believe, what you experience, what you feel, what you believe about yourself, what you don't believe about yourself. Your mind is that important, and the devil understands that. So the devil comes, first of all, with a while, the Greek word methodios. He's headed with a, on a specific lane of attack. He's headed toward your mind. He wants to find access to your mind. And to get in your mind, he begins to act like a devil, diabolos. He begins striking the mind and striking the mind and striking the mind and striking the mind until finally dia, he penetrates the mind. And that word dia carries such the idea of penetration. It's penetration from one side all the way to the other. He wants to totally infiltrate your mind. And that leads us to the third thing. And the third thing is the word devices. And the word devices is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, where the Apostle Paul says, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. And guess what? The word devices is the Greek word noemata, which is derived from the word noose, the word noose is the word for the mind. But when the word noose becomes noemata, it's no longer just a mind, but it's a confused mind. I say it's scrambled brains. And here's what the devil wants to do. First of all, he says, I'm going to take that person down. So he heads to your head. He knows that your head controls your mind, your will, your emotions, what you believe about yourself, what you will project about yourself to others. He begins like a devil diabolus hitting your head, hitting your head, trying to penetrate your mind until finally he penetrates. And when he penetrates, he begins to infiltrate all your thinking until he can pull a device on you. He takes your noose, your mind, and turns it into noe mata. He scrambles your thinking. You become so confused that now you believe the lie is the truth. You believe it's the truth when in fact it's a vain imagination. But you begin to believe that it is the truth, mind games. That's really what it means. Wait, that's not all. We find another very important word, the word stronghold. The word stronghold is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5, where the Apostle Paul tells us we have weapons to pull down strongholds. Well, what's a stronghold? The Greek word stronghold, ukoroma, described two things. First of all, it described a prison. The word ukurama could describe a prison. So if a person has a mental stronghold, it means they are in prison. Even though Jesus has set them free, they have a mental imagination that they are bound. They wish they could be free, not understanding they really are free, but they have a vain imagination telling them they can never be like others. They're living behind bars, looking out through mental bars that really don't exist, but they seem so real to them because they have a device mind games going on in their head, and they are enslaved. They just can't be free like they wish they could be free. But the word stronghold, the Greek word ukoroma, was also the word for a castle or a fortress. Well, what was the purpose of a castle or a fortress? A castle had very tall walls, very thick walls, which made it almost impossible for others to penetrate. Which means, if your mind has been seized with a lie, if mind games are going on inside your head, those mind games seem so real to you that it's like you've been encased in that lie. You're in prison. You're behind bars wishing you could be different. You're encased in the lie, almost like you're within the walls of a castle. And people who try to speak common sense to you can't seem to break through to you because you're living behind the walls of this lie. Perhaps you've been living with these lies for a long, long time, and even though they speak common sense to you and tell you the truth, they can't seem to penetrate you because you're living in a well-defended lie. And then this leads us to word number five, which we find in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, which says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed, of the devil. That word oppressed is the Greek word to describe a wicked king or a wicked tyrant. Well, what does a tyrant do? 
A tyrant lords himself over his subjects. A tyrant tells his subjects what they're going to think, what they're going to eat, what they're going to make, what they're not going to make, what their future will be, what their future will not be. He takes everything he can from them. He is a tyrant. He lords himself and masters himself over them. Well, now we find that when the devil has built a stronghold in your head, a fortress or a castle, he's enslaved you. Then like a wicked king, he moves into your head and from his head like a tyrant, the devil begins to dominate you, master you, tell you what you're going to think, what your future is going to be, what your future will not be. He tries to squash you with his lies. If you understand these five words, you basically understand everything about how the devil operates. Number one, Methodius, the word wiles, he operates on a road or on a lane of attack. He's headed to your head. Number two, when he gets to your head, Diabolos, he's going to strike your mind and strike your mind and strike your mind and strike your mind, trying to penetrate you. Number three, if he penetrates your mind, he's going to pull a device on you. He's going to scramble your brain, so confuse you, pull a mind game on you so that the lie will begin to feel like it is reality to you. Then he'll build a stronghold in your head. And once he's erected a stronghold in your head, he begins to move in and dictate to you what you're going to be, what you're not going to be, what's going to happen in your life, what will never happen in your life. And if you allow him to keep dominating you, what he says to you, if you believe it, will become your reality. This is why it is so important what you listen to. Two voices are speaking to you all the time. First, the voice of God is speaking to you, saying you're the righteousness of God in Christ. You are the healed of the Lord. I've got good plans for you. You've got another voice that's speaking to you, saying you're unworthy, you're not righteous, you're not healed, you're never going to be healed. Both voices are speaking to you. The devil wants your head. God wants your head. You're the only one that can choose which voice you're going to listen to. This is why you need to read your Bible, pray in tongues, renew your mind. You have to decide which voice you're going to listen to. And the voice that dominates you will determine what becomes your reality. Everything operates by faith. Whatever you believe will become your reality. If you believe the lie, the lie will become your reality. If you believe the truth, the truth will become your reality. And that's why it is so vital that you listen to the voice of God and make a choice to pull down strongholds, quit listening to the lie of the enemy. But God has also given us spiritual weapons so that if the enemy has already tried to build a lie in our head, we can take it down. In fact, we're told in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5, that we can cast down vain imaginations. That word cast down, in Greek, means, in Greek it means to pull it down, to take it apart, if need be, brick by brick, to totally disassemble it. And my friends, if a lie has been dominating you for a long time, it's going to take effort on your part. You're going to have to say, I'm going to pull that thing down. I'm not going to finish until I'm free of it. If I have to take it apart piece by piece, brick by brick, mortar by mortar, I'm pulling that thing down out of my mind and off of my life so I can walk free into the reality of everything Jesus has already given to me. You're just living behind imaginary bars. You are free. You know, once I had a friend and he had a goat. He loved his goat. And one day he got a phone call early in the morning. It was from a local sheriff who said, hey, somebody has killed your goat. We've just seen your goat laying in the ditch. Oh, he was heartbroken. So he got in his car, drove to the place where the goat was laying in the ditch. And when he got there, the goat was not dead. Somebody kidnapped his goat, tied his goat up. The goat's legs were all tied up. It was laying in the ditch on his side. And he called the goat Babette. He crawled down into the ditch. He said, ah, Babette, you're okay. He took out his knife and he cut the ropes off the legs of the goat. And the goat just laid there and didn't move. Its legs were still together as if it were still bound, but he had already removed all the ropes. The goat perceived it was still bound, even though it was completely set free. Before that goat began to realize it was free, he had to reach down, pull its legs apart, pick it up, put it on its feet. Only then did it realize, I'm not bound, I'm free. And in the same way, 
Jesus has set you free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed, but lies in the head give us the false perception or the vain imagination that we are still bound. Jesus, I'm bound. Jesus, I can't do this. Jesus, I can't overcome that. Jesus, I have this problem. Jesus, I have that problem. Jesus says, what are you talking about? I paid the price. You're totally free. You're just living in the illusion of bondage. That's the power of who dominates your head. If the enemy dominates your mind, you will live with the illusion of bondage. But through this program, through other programs like this, through the teaching of the Word of God, through renewing your mind, you can begin to realize, hey, I've been set free, and you can begin to walk into your freedom and experience it. But you're going to have to grab hold of the Word of God and decide what voice you're going to listen to. And if you've been listening to the wrong voice for most of your life, it's probably going to be hard for you to stop listening to it because you become accustomed to it. You've got to close your ear to the enemy, open your mind and your ears to the truth and make a decision that you're not going to listen to any lie that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. You're going to hear what God says about you and let God and Jesus dominate your mind and uproot that stronghold from your life. But if you understand these five words, you understand how the devil operates. The word wiles, the word devil, the word devices, the word stronghold, the word oppression. But my friends, God's given you all the weaponry you need to disassemble the lie of the devil in your head to take it apart. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. The devil is real, and as long as you seek to live in God's will, obey his word, and drive back the forces of darkness, the devil will do his best to oppose and thwart the plan that God wants to accomplish through you. But God has given you everything you need to victoriously stand against the devil and to thwart his attacks. That's right. God has provided you with a complete set of spiritual armor that will put the devil on the run every time. With that weaponry at your disposal, you are dressed to kill. In the in-depth 10-part series, Dressed to Kill, Rick Renner covers the power needed to sustain you through any battle, the seven weapons God has provided for you to use against the enemy the way to stand victoriously against the wiles of the devil, the God-given strategy to keep the devil under your feet, and so much more. This powerful, life-changing 10-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $20. You can also order Rick's companion book on spiritual armor and spiritual warfare called Dress to Kill. This fully illustrated 500-page book will answer your questions about the often misunderstood subject of spiritual warfare. It will teach you how to put on the full armor of God, and the important role each piece of armor plays in defeating the enemy. This powerful classic on spiritual warfare and spiritual armor can be yours for just $22. Don't miss this special offer, this series, Dress to Kill, and Rick's companion book, Dress to Kill. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner. You say, Rick, where are you? I'm in the central meeting room of the Tulsa office, and we just concluded a wonderful staff meeting here. I wish that you could meet our team who ministers to our partners. That means they minister to you. They are so trained and they are so committed to minister to people who are reaching out to us from across the face of the planet. And when I say people are reaching out to us from across the world, I really mean from across the world because people are looking for teaching that they can trust. And this building is so important because this is where all the activity happens, particularly where we minister to partners and where we produce materials which we send to the ends of the earth. And right now, we want to retire the debt on this building because if we can retire the debt, it's going to free up finances so we can take the teaching of the Bible further across the face of the earth. Today, I want to invite you to become a part of our giving team. Would you please join us? Help us retire the debt on this building, free up finances, so we can take teaching that people can trust to them wherever they are all over the world. And my friends, if we have to do it by ourselves, it's gonna be hard, but if we do it together, we can get this done. So if you're a part of the giving team, thank you. And if not, please pray about becoming a part of our giving team.
I am so glad you let me be with you today. We've been talking about how the devil operates, and I'm not glorifying the devil. I'm trying to foil his activities in your life, because if you understand how he operates, then you can stop his operation. And as I've been speaking to you today, if you've realized you've got a vain imagination working in your head, you can disassemble it and take it to pieces. And if you want somebody to pray with you about that, call us right now. We'll pray with you and command that thing to loosen its grip on your mind and on your emotions in Jesus' name. Amen. But we're offering you my series, which is called Dress to Kill. It's 10 parts. It comes in multiple formats, and it comes with a wonderful study guide. And we're offering you my book by the same title, which has been read by millions of people all over the world. What a blessing that God has used this book. And I know that God wants to use this book in your life as well. You don't have to take it anymore. That's what it says, because you're dressed to kill. And my friends, you don't have to take it anymore. God's given you power. God's given you weaponry. All of it's in this book. And if you'll embrace the power and embrace the weaponry, you can put the devil on the run in your life. But Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you've given us everything we need to really experience the freedom that you've given to us. Thank you for this, Father. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. Well, when we come back tomorrow, we're going to cover Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, where the Apostle Paul specifically describes what kind of forces we're up against. It's going to be good, but I'll see you tomorrow. But remember, Ecclesiastes 8, 4, it says, where the word of a king is, there really is power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. If you just prayed the prayer of salvation with us, would you please let us know by going to renner.org forward slash salvation? We would love to connect with you. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.